Hello guys, welcome to this new module and we are going to do an interesting thing in this module which is we are going to build a model that will, I mean we are going to train our agent so that uh, it will automatically drive the car. So basically in this case our agent will be car. So we are going to build an agent that will work on car racing version 0 for Jim Open AI that we have discussed before as well. So, um, I mean, the greatest application of uh, reinforcement learning is obviously the self-driving car. And uh, here in this in this uh, module, you will see how this car will drive itself. Um, or perhaps you will see uh, how you, you can have a, a frame, a framework in which you can design a self-driving car. So here you can see that we have, we have, an, we have an environment that is provided by OpenAI Gem. Um, and here we have this map. So let's read about it. So this is a 96 by 96 pixels um, frame. I mean one frame of this um, this game is 96 by 96 pixels which means that on height it has 96 pixels and on width it also has 96 pixels. It is a squared frame. Okay so reward is minus 1 at every frame. Oh, sorry minus 0 0.1 and it will be a positive thousand divided by n for every track tile visited so if it has it has cleared a track it will get this much reward right a positive reward where n is the total number of tiles in the track here you can see that it has a lot of tiles over here so for example i know this is a little bit unclear unclear yet so let's make it a little bit more clear so for example if you have since track will be uh, you know generated um, again and again so uh, and it also generates randomly so uh, the number of n or number of tiles it actually varies from um, every every uh, episode to episode so if you have finished in 732 frames your reward would be a thousand minus my, uh, 0 0.1 which is the negative reward multiplied by 732 and which is 926.8 points so this will be your reward so um, episode finishes when all tiles are visited some indicators shown at the bottom as well so it is basically uh, basically a red green blue or you can say a colorful screen or a colorful frame so basically the dimensions of this frame would be 96 into 96 into 3 and 3 would represent the RGB colors right so uh, yeah this was a little bit of introduction to the game and an upcoming video will be talking about um, environment and actions and observation space Okay, before moving um, on towards the um, talk about the environment of this game, let's import a few important libraries that will help us in this regard. First of all, we need Swig for this. Swig, um, I mean here you can go swig.org, uh, you can go on this web address and you can download your, your desired Swig file from here. Once you, you will be able to download this file, the, the, it will be a zip file. You will extract it and uh, you will add its path uh, I mean you, you will add its path to the path variables of your your machine and um, yeah that's about it that's about swig it it actually it actually helps interacting C or C++ interface with Pythonic interface right that that's all you you need to know about swig um, once you will add the path of swig to the path of your uh, verb uh, variables of, of Windows um, and if you're working with Mac Mac all you have to do is you, you can install swig by using brew command right okay and then you also have to install gem box 2d and um, pygelet and its specific version uh, that you want to install is 1.3.2 so these three things that that you have to install in your machine I already have installed these things in my machine that's why I will not run this command so since you have not installed these things so this is the command that you want to run uh, first of all, ex first of all, as usual, exclamation mark. Then pip if you're you're using pip, then install and finally gem box 2D, right? This will install a 2D environment for the gem, and also pygelet for some uh, some data visualizations, right? So let me comment it again. And here, let's go and let's import a few libraries. First of all, we'll import gem, and then we'll import PPO. PPO is the algorithm that we are going to use from 
stable baselines 3 right we have talked about stable baseline quite a lot so I'm not going to spend any time on here so PPO is the algorithm that I'm, I'm going to use um, you can use any of uh, any of the algorithm of your choice as well so another thing that I want to import from stable baseline is the um, evaluation policy so I'll, I'll say dot common um, mm -hmm. C O W M O N right dot common oh C O W M O N right yeah dot evaluation right I want to import evaluate policy awesome great and uh, yeah that, that that's about it that's what I wanted to import let's run it awesome great so here let's say uh, let's get the environment so I'll say env equals to gem dot make right that's how we create an environment and here I'll say car racing version zero right and let's run it okay awesome great so that's how that's how we um, we can import the libraries and in upcoming video we are going to play around with the with the environment with action space and observation space so three steps you need to um, download the swig files or if you're in windows you can install it by using brew command then you want to install pip uh, i mean gym uh, box 2d right and then you want to install pyslet and that's about it and then you want to import these libraries and that and that's how you can make the environment for car racing um, car racing game okay so we have our environment so here we'll say environment dot observation space right and let's run it so here is our observation space it is a box and it has I don't know a lot of values so let's sample one observation space right okay so this is how our one observation space will look like and still it is a little bit confusing so let's uh, check its shape right or you can say let's check its dimensions so as we discussed in last la, uh, in second last video or the first video of this module it has 96 by 96 frame and three represents the RGB colors if we go back over here you can see that at a, it is described over here it is a 96 by 96 pixels frame and three represents this RGB right if, if you will convert it into a black and white frame then it will be only 96 by 96 by one frame right okay and uh, yeah let's talk about the uh, action space so we'll say environment dot action space let's run it so it will be a box of three um, uh, three values right so let's get its sample as well sample right so it will be something like this it, it, it will uh, represent three values now these it will actually contain three values now what these three values can uh, actually consist of let's go to our notebook and here you can see that so if you want to turn left you uh, you have to write minus one over here at at zeroth index right let's call it zero one two right and if you want to turn right you have to write positive one at zeroth index which means this zeroth index actually represents the direction of the car right and then you want if you want to apply brakes all you have to do is you have to make this variable equals to zero i mean if your your race is zero then obviously your uh, car is going to stop and if you want to accelerate the, the car you have to make it one so it will run at, 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 at the fastest speed so perhaps this represents the speed and here now if uh, uh, um, I mean if you want to uh, make some combinations of, of these these actions how can you do that okay so if you want to turn left hard and you want to also accelerate hard all you have to do is I mean you can you can pick it out from here as well this is turn left hard this is accelerate hard if you mix them up it will become this thing right minus one comma one uh, if you want to turn left soft right and you also want to accelerate soft 
all you have to do is you have to reduce these two values right if you want to uh, if you'll make minus uh, this value minus 5 and this value um, 0 0.5 sorry minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 it will um, turn left soft and also it will accelerate soft um, have you noticed that our action space is huge in this case previously what was the action space let's say in the cart pole the action space was moving left or moving right right and also some velocities right um, uh, if we talk about the frozen lake game we had only I think four actions right moving up down left and right but now we have we mainly have these five um, these five actions right but within these five actions I mean almost every action is continuous action if you want to turn left this is one action but how hard or how soft you want to turn left this is a continuity of the action for example um, and this turn left rep represents from minus 1 to uh, 0 so from 0 to minus 1 it will turn left and from 0 to positive 1 it will turn right okay so this will turn right this will turn left but from 0 to minus 1 there are some infinity many values and from 0 to 1 there are again some infinity many values so the th these actions are continuous actions and uh, you will see how how this um, how this algorithm will also take care of it it will also decide how um, soft I want to turn and how hard I want to accelerate or vice versa and so on and how hard I want to apply the brakes as well right so these are the things when your action space is so huge these are the things uh, I mean these are the absolute applications of your uh, your deep reinforcement learning where your your normal your uh, conventional reinforcement learning actually fails and you have to use one of your your deep reinforcement learning algorithms that in our case will be PPO I mean perhaps you can use DQN as well or whatever you want to use out of stable baseline three algorithms I mean there are a bunch of algorithms available they keep on developing and they keep on adding more and more algorithms into um, into their bucket list all right um, yeah one more thing uh, let's go to the coding environment and let's uh, let's write um, our, our routine thing um, let's write a random uh, fun I mean let's write a random solution so uh, I'll say episodes equals to um, 5 right and th then I'll say episode in epis episodes are uh, state equals to first of all obviously we will reset the environment so I'll say env dot reset right ah, but before that let me show you one more thing how our screen actually looks like so let's say environment dot um, render so let's render the environment and let's see how it looks like um, oh it looks like a blank screen I guess um, I think we we need to uh, but bef we need to um, reset the environment first so first of all I'll um, I'll I'll close the environment right so that we yeah we got rid of that and now let's uh, reset the environment first env dot reset now let's run it and here you can see that um, where it is oh why I'm not able to open it I don't know um, okay so here it is um, I mean this is a sort of you can see a random frame out of a, out of our game it has this track and that track co contains a lot of tiles in it right so again let's close this environment right okay so we have um, tested an, our environment in a way uh, in a way and now let's write a solution for a random solution for this game and here we'll say done equals to false so far you guys should have uh, rem I mean um, uh, learned it by heart I mean you guys have an idea what is the general flow of a typical reinforcement learning algorithm this is a question that usually um, interview is asked in interviews so here I'll say environment dot render first of all we'll, we'll render the environment actually we should not render the environment it, 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 it took so much time right so let's save our time so here we'll say action and our action will be uh, from action space we will be sampling an action which means that we are 
uh, picking a random action right and then we'll say new state comma reward comma done comma info so these are the things that we will be getting from where from environment dot step right and in step we pass the action great 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 okay and the next thing is we want to update the score score plus equals to the reward right and yeah that's about it and let's print reward over here so um, um how can we do that so we'll say episode number this right episode number this and score is that here we'll say format yeah we want to format it and first of all we'll pass the num the episode number and then we'll pass the score as well yeah great that's about it and here we'll just to be on a safe side let's close this environment right okay let's run it I'm not rendering it by the way so it will only run but it says that oh yeah obviously integer is not iteratable so we'll say range and in range we'll pass these values right okay so it is iterating and it will also present some results as well but why it is not working I think it is it will take some time yeah because we have not rendered it right so here you can see that episode 0 our score is minus 33 which is pathetic and in episode 1 our score is minus 30 which is again pathetic and so on right um, let's make it a little bit interesting and let's render it so that you guys can see the screen and you can you guys can see um, how this game is being played right so let me run it again and okay let's watch this screen the game will appear in a while according to my experience you can say okay so I'm going to uh, pause the video uh, and let's wait when this game will start over here here you can see that the game is being played by our random agent right it is taking a few actions over here and also you can see that it has generated a track a random track and this track has how many tiles it has 333 tiles right so it is taking some random actions sometimes it goes right sometimes it goes left and also its speed is um, its uh, velocity or acceleration you can say is also a random action so sometimes it, it is it moves fast and sometimes it doesn't move fast so I mean it will take it is very slow thing you can check it at your own and obviously it will take so much time that's why I'm not going to test it and here you can see that for one episode or I mean for the first episode it has also printed the result which is minus 39.75 right from next video we are going to write the or we are going to train the model for this game so stay tuned all right so let's work on the training of model and we have explored the environment good enough so our model would be a ppo model by the way have we imported ppo um yeah we have imported imported it over here so our model is ppo model and here in ppo what we are going to do is we are going to say cnn policy so we are going to use cnn policy over here remember i told you if you are going to work on computer vn based task or you can say on images or videos based task so generally people use cnn policy because it has convolution in the beginning right so uh, if you want to learn more about cnn we also have a complete full-fledged course on convolutional neural network you can check it out on our website okay so um, yeah so since we have a 96 by 96 by 3 frame so we'll be working with CNN policy we'll also pass environment into it and we'll say make our verbose equals to 1 so that it will also uh, print the stats let me run it awesome it has automatically wrapped our environment into a uh, vectorized environment so, uh, I mean we did not do it deliberately over here so it has done it by itself 
okay so here we'll say model dot learn and all we have to do is we have to pass the total timestamps which is in our case let's train it for um, let's train it for only 5,000 uh, 5,000 um, time steps right uh, let's not train it for a longer time ideally you should train it I don't know for perhaps for a 500,000 time steps right so uh, I mean this is just to show you how, how can you write a pipeline in order to train a, a car racing game so let me run it so it is running um, while it is running let's write some code to evaluate this policy right so let let it running let it keep uh, I mean let's keep it running and let's write over here uh, see you can see that it is generating different uh, tracks for it so that it it can um, it can train well so here let's say evaluate okay evaluate policy right evaluate policy and here we'll say um, sorry evaluate policy is our method right that we have imported in the beginning over 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 where over here let me copy it um, just to be sure that there is no typo so we'll say evaluate policy and here we'll pass model into it right model since a model is being trained right so we will not execute this cell for now so model then we'll pass the environment then we'll pass for how many episodes do we want to evaluate it so we'll say number um, of evaluation episodes right um, let's evaluate for uh, evaluate it for um, for only two tracks right um, and then uh, render equals to I'm making it false if you want to visualize it you can make it true and also let's evaluate it for five um, number of episodes okay uh, and and here on the above you can see that training has begun it it also uh, represent I mean it is also displaying a lot of verbose or you can say stats for the for the training that we have already discussed it, it uh, I mean it um, it displays the frame per second iterations time and lapse total time steps that it has done yet it has done for 4096 time steps which means that it is going to uh, end very soon because total time steps are only 5000 uh, I'm sure that it will not train well enough but um, the goal is to uh, let you know how a training process can happen in in a car racing game or you can say in a self-driving car okay so after um, policy evaluation what we want to do is um, let's write an environment in which um, our agent will play this game by using the models right so initially we'll say state equals to environment dot reset right and then we'll say while true action oh it is again displaying some data so action and states and I mean action and state will be coming from the model dot predict and in this will pass the state right initially it will be the the new state of uh, the state that comes at very beginning and later on will will keep updating the state and then we'll get a state rewards also the done variable and the info from where from environment dot step and in this step we'll pass the action right and it will return these many variables and then in an upcoming loop in upcoming iteration of this loop this state will be passed uh, to again prediction model dot predict right awesome great and what else um, environment dot render since we want to realize that how our agent is playing the game that's why we will we will render it right okay so yeah our training is done you can see that our final loss was 0 0.162 which is um, I mean quite huge it is it is not good but but that's how a training happens you have to uh, you have to train it for um, a lot of uh, a lot of time steps over here right okay 
so now let's evaluate it for 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 five episodes and it will not render it because render equals to false otherwise if we will render it it will take more and more and more time so let's wait i'm going to pause this video and i'll come back when it will evaluate the policy so far it has evaluated uh, it, evaluation is done for only two episodes we our goal is to do evaluation for five episodes all right so it has executed and here you can see that here are the results it it has displayed the reward uh, the overall rewards and also the standard deviation so here is the standard deviation here is the reward which is not good enough obviously so yeah that's about it and here let's see how our agent plays this game by using our model right we are um, we are use, making use of the method predict from the model and we are passing state into it so that it, it predicts um, some intelligent actions we are not expecting it to predict intelligent actions in our case because we have not trained it trained it for good enough uh, time steps but um, that's how it works so let's run it and it will also render the screen right so let's run it oh it says there is some error let's see so it says at least one stride is given okay okay so here here you can see that obviously it is not running good enough but uh, that's how that's how you can implement um, an overall uh, pipeline of what we have done so far okay so we have implemented the the car racing game as well and in this module we have basically learned that um, how can we deal with, with with the continuous actions if actions are so much or so many how can you deal with it and uh, yeah that's about it mm -hmm.